What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. CFCGP here with yet another video. We are coming to you immediately after Chelsea do a snatch and grab 1-0 at Bournemouth. It was a tale of two halves, so to speak. But I think the real, real crux of one I want to get at here is that Chelsea were able to do something that they haven't done in a very, very long time. They kept a clean sheet away. And they did not give up an equalizing goal late on or a winner late on. They took the game by control in the second half. Now, I will be completely honest with you. Bournemouth did step off just a little bit. So as Bournemouth steps off, Chelsea are able to get a lot more control in the midfield. So you saw Caicedo, you saw Renato Viega all start to look a little bit more comfortable in the second half probably around the 60th minute when Bournemouth decided to sort of step off a little bit because in that first half, Bournemouth was causing Chelsea a number, a number of problems with the pressing, with just closing down passing lanes. Chelsea turned the ball over a lot. And I think there was a couple things to attribute to that. I think it was the players that were on the field. There are a couple that we will talk about specifically and the tactics that were kind of brought out, right? And those kind of go hand in hand. Number one, Axel Desasi absolutely cannot play as a starting right back right now. He is not good enough. His uh, speed is not, he's not quick enough on the outside to recover. Passing range isn't that good. Gets closed down quickly and makes really untimely errors. And it just seems like that right-hand side was a, a problem the whole match. And Chelsea were beginning exploited because of just inefficiencies from Axel de Sassi over there. My second thing, the midfield, right? Chelsea had gone to a double pivot in one of the matches so far. That was against Manchester City. They were in a double pivot, and I understood that because you'd want to have cover for that back three. You want to feel technically secure back there against a team with as much firepower as Manchester City. But in a match against Bournemouth where you don't necessarily need to have that much security to have both Caicedo and Vega as those players it was just not for me now you could say technically that Vega maybe was the inverting inverting uh, fullback and that made sense but then the position of then playing in the position of Mark Kukurea just didn't make sense for the most part Kukurea was playing as an attacking eight it seemed like for most of the match which was a little odd to me you know specifically speaking about the players that you had on the bench that are built to play that role. Um, so that was a little weird. Now, to be fair, Kukurea did make some nice runs, um, and especially in the second half when Jaden Sancho got on the left-hand side. Um, those two were com making really smart combinations and leading to good chances. Um, but that is something that I would like to see shirt up. Now, Enzo was not playing. Lavia is not there. So maybe this was just sort of an on-the-fly thing because certain players weren't prepared. Um, but it's something that needs to be addressed. Positives, though. Jaden Sancho is absolutely for real. The dribbling, the creativity, just the wherewithal to understand the space that Nkunku had in the box to make that little pass to get the goal was sensational. Um, his attacking dribbles, his passes on the uh, combination with Kukurea were very good. Um, I was really impressed with Sancho. And I think from the beginning when we started to talk about if Sancho was a possibility, we kind of thought about maybe there is a lack of confidence with him being at United. There was just a problem overall with Sancho and United, which just kind of led to him not feeling comfortable. And he said it after the game. He feels comfortable here. He's felt welcomed. He's felt like he's going to be used in the right way. So to see Sancho get an assist and play really, really strong football for 45 minutes, I was truly, truly impressed with him. Christopher Nkunku as well. I was very impressed with him. Just the to score, right? You could talk about every other thing that he did in the game, um, but the goal is just so important. The strength, the wherewithal, you know, that is what a proven goal scorer looks like. Um, and when Nkunku can offer that and he can come in late and finish games and you start to wonder, is he going to be a guy that's going to have to push his way into the starting lineup? He seems to be taking it, um, you know, on command. He scored goals in uh, conference league qualification as well. So 
We'll have to see where Nkunku lies in terms of the pecking order eventually, but it was a great goal. It was the one that got us over the line. Finally, a little unsung hero that I have is Tosin out of Tosin, just in general. Tosin was very good, I thought. Came in in the 61st minute, you know, came out for Desasi, moved Fofana over to that right hand side. Tosin was in the center and he just dominated airily, um, defensively, just with dribbles and ground duels. He was very, very good. Um, I was really impressed with Tosin for the most part. Um, really impressed with Colwell too. I thought Colwell had a very good game. There were some, some lapses, some bad passes, but overall I thought he'd played very, very well as well. And a quick shout out to Robert Sanchez. Distribution, obviously not there. The penalty he conceded was not his fault. Um, bad pass from Fafana, who looked really bad today, um, but he stood on his head for a time. You know, he had save after save after save that kept us in it, so... My hope is that as we look at this match and we see what the trajectory is for this team, I think this proves that we can do this. We can hold down the fort and, you know, teams are going to score goals on us. It doesn't mean that we're like some, you know, elite defensive team now. But in the big moments, finishing out games, this was a step in the right direction. So we need to see if this is going to become a habit for these guys or if there's going to be a, a longer-term problem with giving up late goals and kind of folding under pressure, but they didn't do it today. you got to win ugly in the Premier League. you got to win ugly, and, and they did today. So I was very impressed. I want to give a huge shout-out to the team, Maresca, for making some changes as well. I was really impressed with the entire performance. But as, al as always, guys, I want to give a huge shout-out to my show sponsor, Cy Phillips Talks Chelsea, an amazing platform. We've got a lot of stuff coming out for you this year. Podcasts, match reviews, daily regulated blog, transfer news never, ever stops. My match review and analysis is on there as well. So go ahead, find the link in the description, and subscribe to that today. Subscribe, like to this channel, comment, let me know what you guys think about the performance. We'll be back in the studio for the next video on the road at my mom's for this one. Um, but it was a great win. So thank you as always, and we will talk to you very soon.